Golly, sir, I just don't know. It seems like you're kind of broad brushing all these people. Damn it, Carl, they're terrorists. I tell you, they're all terrorists. Send out the memo. Imagine the pirate leaders of a real piracy operation on the high seas accusing an honest freight company of piracy simply because they flew a flag signifying that they would unite and protect themselves against the real pirates. And what would you think of the masterminds behind a carjacking ring putting out a memo labeling you as a threat to all the car owners in the area simply because you had a sticker on your window stating that you would defend yourself in the event of a real carjacking. What if one of the largest known criminal organizations and domestic terrorism units in the country distributed a guide labeling all of us, all of us Americans, as domestic terrorists simply because we resisted their criminal activity. Well, that's exactly what's happening. We know about the embarrassing criminal history of the FBI, CIA, DEA, TSA, ATF, and all the alphabet soup agencies. We know what their pattern is. We know how they operate, and we know there are a lot of victims they've left in their wake. Destitute, imprisoned, and even murdered. Innocent people who just wanted to be left alone, like Randy Weaver and his wife, and like the Branch Davidians, as just two of many examples of those who were murdered in cold blood while these same agencies run drugs, plot more murders, deprive people of their rights under the color of law, conspire against American freedoms, invade the homes of innocent people, and steal billions of dollars in cash, and seize property under their civil asset forfeiture schemes. And this doesn't include the system of economic terrorism set up through so-called traffic law. From the practical, demonstrable standpoint, agencies like the FBI are the true enemy of the American people as they routinely violate their oath to serve us and protect our rights. Their occupation centers around trampling the Constitution as they violently impose their will on peaceful, innocent Americans. So when it comes to the release of this Federal Bureau of Investigation Domestic Terrorism Symbols Guide, one can't help but chuckle at the insanity, the perverted irony, and the brazen hypocrisy of such a guide. In the guide summary, we're met with the words, the following symbols are used by anti-government or anti-authority violent extremists, specifically militia violent extremists. MVE. Let's just slow it down and try to digest this convoluted pig slop, shall we? We all know that governments are clear terrorist groups specializing in the theft and violence of the people they claim to serve. History shows us that government is just a euphemism for an organized criminal cartel. So it's laughable that they who practice criminality and violence would call anyone else an anti-authority violent extremist. Professional propagandists themselves, they have the gall to write, MVE symbols are often found on propaganda, online forums, memes, merchandise, group logos, flags, tattoos, uniforms, etc., widespread use of symbols and quotes from American history, especially the Revolutionary War, exists within MVE networks. Historic and contemporary military themes are common for MVE symbols. But then they say, the use or sharing of these symbols alone should not independently be considered evidence of MVE presence or affiliation or service as an indicator of illegal activity, as many individuals use these symbols for their original historic meaning or other nonviolent purposes. What's so funny about this is that their original historic meaning is exactly what the FBI has a problem with. 
Groups of people like Sam Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and all their pals were sick and tired of being pushed around by an out-of-control, bloated government. So naturally, they viewed their government as sinister and decided to unite against it. They even saw fit to write down and detail their departure from such a government in the Declaration of Independence. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of unalienable rights, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Abolish government. Imagine that. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So even the original historic meaning is condemned and criminalized by the FBI. Here are the symbols that the extremist domestic terror cell known as the FBI is on the lookout for. And those who use these symbols are seen by them as militia violent extremists. The Boogaloo flag. The anarcho-capitalism flag represented by black and yellow an ideology held by some MVEs advocating the state be eliminated or minimized and that public services be provided by private companies competing in a free market. If the FBI, which is a state agency, is opposed to minimizing the state and fostering a free market climate, what does that say about them? The Punisher skull and warrior culture symbolism. And how about this? 2A every day. MVEs justify their existence with the Second Amendment due to the mention of a well-regulated militia as well as the right to bear arms. Just let it be known to everybody in America that you are seen as a violent extremist because you recognize and propagate the right to keep and bear arms. Molan Labi is condemned. The black flag is condemned. The Gadsden flag is condemned. Why? Because it's a historical American symbol representing gun rights and limited government. Keep in mind, these are all viewed by the FBI as domestic terror symbols. The Liberty Tree and the Betsy Ross flag. It's all symbolic of domestic terrorism to the FBI. So rather than self-reflecting on the real reason people feel the need to call to mind this revolutionary imagery and the shadow of a supercharged, tyrannical government in the first place, and then maybe take some efforts to come back in line with the original meaning of the original Constitution, those who control the unconstitutional government agencies project the unrighteous violence they're involved in committing onto those who just want this despotic government to leave them alone. And did you notice the absence of a true violent extremist and terrorist symbol? The thin blue line flag of unbridled, unaccountable evil? Yeah, that's not in the FBI's domestic terrorism symbols guide. This right here is the kind of evil that hides behind qualified immunity, no matter the crime. But the FBI is not going to talk about that. What they're engaged in is classic propagandized projection. The victimizer is blaming the victim for taking a defensive posture. It's very sick and very twisted. It's just another psychological operation they specialize in conducting. The abuser shames and insults the abused. It's a pathetic psychopathic play that further exposes the corrupt nature of the FBI and its federalized corporate sister agencies. Or should we call them sinister agencies? So yeah, be on the lookout for the real violent extremists. Agencies like the FBI are always showing their true colors. The question is, will we wake up too late to do anything about it? Leave your thoughts about this for the world, the global thought police, and the domestic terror cell known as the FBI in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you haven't done so already, support the channel, grab a shirt, become a channel member, but more importantly, 
fight for and stand for your freedoms. If you don't exercise your freedoms, you will lose them. Freedom is dangerous. The only thing more dangerous is not having freedom. I'll see you in the next video.